My name is Jeremy Corbell. I seek to weaponize your curiosity, and if you're ready to suspend your own prejudice, welcome to the world of extraordinary beliefs. Are we all the product of an alien video game? The extraterrestrial technology is real, it's possible. We have material that has been pulled out of a man's leg that should not exist. This sample could not have been made on Earth because the isotopic ratios. I know there are alien craft here from another planet, but I was inside one. Who are we? And where are we actually sitting within the architecture of our universe? Are we alone? Or is the answer simply stranger than we can think? We can think. I know what I saw. I definitely saw different footage during those 2004 events of a different object by far. The object that I saw was a flying saucer shape, not a Tic Tac. And I've tried verifying this with other people, and they just do not want to talk about it. I'll never forget that day the rest of my life. That day changed my whole perspective. It blew my mind. That's the voice of a man named Trevor. Trevor was a radar operator and a direct witness to one of the most current and well-documented UFO encounters in modern history. On December 21st, 2017, there was a tectonic shift in secrecy. The Department of Defense authorized two videos of fighter pilots engaging UFOs to be released to the public, and the New York Times published a story about our government's involvement in studying the subject. The 2004 Nimitz Tic Tac UFO encounters became the tip of the spear in the public debate on UFOs. Commander David Fravor, a fighter pilot with the Black Aces, came forward with his experiences and testimony. There were a number of individuals during the events who were aware of what was unfolding. Trevor is one of them. More and more witnesses are coming forward. For those of you who remember, the Tic Tac UFO case is one that I reported on on Coast to Coast AM with George Knapp both in May and October of 2017. This UFO case was on my radar for years prior and I took the time to build a small network of witnesses involved in this unique military UFO event series. The story is now out and the pieces are being put together by the public. And the news continues to explode and be understood around the world government footage from active UFO engagements. Trevor's testimony is unique, and as you will hear, he was exposed to footage from the event series that sounds a bit different than what is now in the public realm. I'm just reporting the news. It's up to you to make sense of it all. What is your name? What was your rank? And what were your duties? My first name is Trevor. I will not disclose my last name. I was an operations specialist. I was a E-4. My duties were pretty much air, air and surface radar. I also worked on a system called Chibital, and I did a bunch of other stuff too within my division. We're talking about the 2004 Nimitz Tic Tac UFO events. You were on board and part of that deployment. Can you tell me a little bit about that? We're just doing like workups, like JTFX, going out to the operating area and playing more games and testing out equipment and doing all those sorts of things and training people. I was actually on the air radar side at that time, specifically. Everything went down within however many days I was seeing things on the radar. I just remember the one day where it was very obvious that something was going on in the top left. Uh, side of that uh, box, operating box, because we all have our own specific boxes that we do circles in. I just thought it was suspicious, I mean, with all the experience and the things that I've seen. And so we're talking about 2004 on the Nimitz. Mm-hmm. I was senior on Chibital. Uh I was one of the senior people on Air Radar. I was in charge of Scenic or low vis supply PO. You were in charge of an aspect of radar operations on the Nimitz during that UFO event. Correct, yes. I was part of an air watch team, yes. In 2004, between November 10th through November 14th, when there was a whole series of events 
there was a crescendo. Commander David Fravor and the flight group that went after him came back with footage of these events and came back on board. But your experience was a little different. You were in a secure radar room and started to notice something strange, and you were the first to notice it. Yeah, we were in CDC. What is that? Combat Direction Center, what they call, quote-unquote, the heart of the ship. It's a normal day, and all of a sudden, what happens? You just start seeing things in that top left corner of the box, start seeing things blip in and out. You just see something chilling there for a little bit, and then boom, it's gone. And then it's over here in a different area of that corner. It's like flashing. It's solid, then it's gone, then it moves to the left or the right. So it keeps doing that. Like it's moving around. It's, you know, there's activity going on. I think to myself, like, what the hell is going on? I let my supervisors know what's going on, and they said, okay. You know, it's no big deal. You'd mark aircraft, whatever they were, you would mark them. I couldn't do it because that object or whatever that was, Flipping in and out, I couldn't tag it. So they basically ignored it. My whole watch. At least that's what I. That's what I know. You know what I mean? Maybe they knew something. I don't know. You got to remember, we're just doing workups. We're in the Pacific Ocean. You know, you're only so far off the coast of Mexico, south of California, and west of west off the coast of Mexico. You don't think anything crazy, but when you're seeing just this one area, it was a little obvious to me something that is over there. So you're having a normal day, you're watching mm -hmm. your, your radar scans, you're supposed to be tagging aircraft, and all of a sudden you're seeing these right. anomalous blips coming in and out right. off of your screen, and you're thinking, what's going on? We're not in a war zone, we're, we're in a you know, U.S. controlled area. Yeah. You at that point al alert or notify your superiors, and they kind of look at it and say, okay, keep going. They, they don't make a big deal yeah. about it. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're training people, too. You know, we're just doing workups. I mean, we're not in a, you know, in a hot zone. So If you were in a hot zone, this would be a threat. Oh, it would be all over it. F-18s would have been over there. In seeing these blips come in your radar, if you were in a war zone, the, the, the alerts would go off. They'd shoot F-18s over there. This would be a big deal. Right. And these objects that were coming in and out of your screen, did they appear to be moving fast? Is that why they were? Yes. Like, so meaning it would be, and it would be stationary, and then boom, it would move. Then it would just chill there. Whereas if it's aircraft, it would be moving like a solid movement across the screen. Whereas here, it's like jumping around. That, that's the only way I could describe it, jumping around. That's what was funky. I mean, how could something move so fast like that? I've never seen it on your radar. So not you possible. Know? Oh, hell no. No, uh -uh. The way that these things were moving is unlike mm -hmm. anything that you've ever seen with our technologies. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I've never seen that before. So that, that's what gets your suspicion, you know? You're thinking, what's going on? Why is there all this movement going on, all this activity? Yeah. You're seeing these targets moving in com extraordinary ways that would be considered mm -hmm. a threat anywhere else if you were in a hostile territory, and yeah. and you can't tag them, you can't mark them. You alert whoever's in command above you, and they look at it and they tell you keep just keep working. Yeah, basically, yeah, uh, yeah, they ignored it. And you can't tell if it was multiple objects. Yeah, I couldn't tell you that. How many? Uh, anomalous targets did you see during that course of the beginning of observing this on your radar? I mean, I'm on watch six to eight hours, so the whole time I was on watch. Is this the day that the whole ship became alerted that evening that pilots came yeah. in with footage? The only thing I could tell you is that, yes, it is that day. I'll never forget that day the rest of my life. I gave my pass down, the end of my watch, I gave my pass down, and I passed down that activity. And I passed down that activity one specific person, too. And that one specific person is the one that called me to come up and look at the video. You were relieved of your command in the afternoon between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., but it was that day, November, oh, 4th, yeah. November 14th, 2004, when Commander David Fravor came back and, and the flight after him with footage, and that spread like wildfire across the ship, that they had caught something. 
the UFOs. But something else happened. So you are relieved of your command. You go yeah. back to your birthing. In being relieved of your command, you pass the information forward to somebody. And in an unusual move, you were called mm -hmm. to view some footage because I guess they felt like they owed you that much for being the first to actually see and try to target these things. So can you explain to me, you're in your birthing, what exactly happens? Get a phone call. You know, I didn't think nothing of it. So I get the phone, he's like, dude, you got to get up here right now and check this out. He goes, you're right. I didn't run, but I hauled ass up to the CDC. I got up there, and sure enough, they brought me over, sat down, watched the video. I watched it with a few officers, a couple that were, you know, pilots and, you know, a few that weren't. Many of these people have had, you know, eons in the Navy. So, yeah, we're just sitting there watching the video and slow mowing the video, watching it several times. It blew my mind. How long were you in your birthing before you got that call approximately? I would say it wasn't long. It wasn't nighttime yet. You know, I was still in my coveralls. Maybe a couple hours, maybe. This is the information I was trying to get from that specific person that called me. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't talk to me. You've already said a couple times that you have tried to dig into this. You've tried to get other people involved in that day to talk to you. People seem hesitant or resistant to talk about this event. Why is that? Great question. I don't know. I know the one guy is, you know, he's a patriot, you know. I don't know if he feels like he's going against the government or his country. I don't know. I did talk to a female. She was on the, on the watch that passed down, and she remembers that pilot coming into CDC and showing the video. Where do you walk to? What does it look like? And who's in there? Yeah, so I walk in CDC, excited as hell. And I go past the children's machine, make a left. That's your air radar with your FCs over there. And I just go behind the, I call it the command table. Go behind there and they're all encouraging me to sit down, check this out. And the room's dark. You know, it's CDC, it's dark. Lots of activity going on. I don't touch the computer. I don't touch any of that stuff. They're sitting there showing me what's going on. And it's already downloaded. I mean, I don't know. That's insanely fast. I don't know how that works, but it's downloaded to Cipernet. What do you mean by it was insanely fast and downloaded? Cipernet is a, it's a secured, secret, I don't know how secret or top secret or whatever, like internet. So only certain people have access to that internet. So it's a highly secure net, really, is what it is. And it was downloaded already to that net. The video was downloaded to that net. Yeah, the one that I saw, yeah. When I came in there, I didn't know any of that. You know what I mean? I had no clue until you know, a month or so ago that, that the pilot actually came in there with footage. So I think, I think the footage that I saw, I'm guessing it, it's got to be from underneath the nose of, of the F-18. What you saw is different than what's out there, and that's what's so interesting. They quickly uploaded this to Cipronet, and, it, right. and the footage you saw, you describe it very differently than what is out there about the events. What do right. you see on the screen? You can see that the F-18s are moving, and you see this object mimic the F-18s. This object had shot from basically from the ocean up. You could see that. That object made a couple different quick maneuvers. So if the F-18 made a le bank left, it mocked the F-18 every time. You're describing the object mirroring the, the, the pilots, so actually mirroring the movements, like mocking yeah. the, the yeah. movements. It was outpacing our best fighter planes. Oh, easy. Oh, my God, yeah. The last part of the video that I remember is that this object... Now, if you're looking at the screen, it went left, and then it banked straight up. I mean, it just, it was insane. I, I couldn't even explain, like, it just went to the left really fast and went, boom, went straight up. And I know this was on, on the Cipronet because we slowed it down. Like, they slowed it down by frame by frame, like, basically in slow-mo. And you could see where this thing, it doesn't even exist. Like, it, like, skips time. You know, where it's that fast that you cannot see this object for a period of a couple frames. And then it just, boom, it goes up. And I remember the officer saying, there's nothing on this planet that can do that. It's not possible. 
that that aircraft would be in pieces. How many G's is that <laughs> to pull up like that? It's just not possible. We don't have anything like that that can move like that on, on this planet Earth, and there's nothing that can take those types of Gs, that force. That's what they were trying to point out, too, the officers. Like, when we slow mo the video, you didn't see it for so many frames. There, you wouldn't see the object for several frames. And then you saw it, and then, boom, it was gone. When it made that maneuver, it would, it would basically disintegrate you know, into pieces. So it was so fast, and the G-forces would have been so spectacular, your cameras yeah. couldn't even pick it up. Exactly. Yep, that's exactly it. What did the object look like? It looked more domey to me, and flat on the bottom. But I don't, everybody says Tic Tac, I don't remember that at all. Straight dome, but like a flat bottom. And what you saw did not look like a Tic Tac or an oblong no, object? No, it looked just like... Just like a flying saucer, just like we all know, we've all seen reports of, you know, just a dome with a flat bottom. Exactly how I remember it. Just like that. You could tell that. You could tell from the video. It's obvious. You, you could totally tell that. So it had a domed top, a flat bottom. Were there any seams on it, or did it just look like a rounded top? Mm -mm. No, it just looked clean, smooth. Okay, so your classic flying yeah. saucer, flat bottom, dome top. Right. Did everybody in that room know that they were looking at a UFO, a flying oh, yeah. saucer? Did everybody in that room have the understanding that it was not ours, meaning not human? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're shocked. You know, they can't believe what they're seeing, but they can, because it's true. Some of you were pretty sure this was extraterrestrial, for lack of a better term. Oh, yeah. So this footage you saw is different than the footage that you see has been released by the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because I've watched it several times, and it's not the same. So I definitely saw different footage during those 2004 events of a different object by far. The object that I saw was a flying saucer shape, not a Tic Tac. And it's not even as clear as I saw it. The video footage you saw was much clearer than what the public is seeing now. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a technology that none of us have ever seen. And none of the officers even in there have seen it. But when they're making comments about, you know, there's nothing on this planet that can, you know, exert those Gs, that just tells you something. You don't believe this saucer technology is ours? Definitely not. Maybe we are experimenting with stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. It's the common understanding of the people you talked with that this is not human technology. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Especially what? aircraft going in and out of the water. Out of the water? Correct. Well, we do know from Commander David Fravor's testimony that there was a USO, unidentified submerged object, under the mm -hmm. water. It's sounding more and more like the footage you saw is not the footage that was released by the Department of Defense. Oh, yeah, most definitely. We're talking about a flying mm -hmm. saucer that was under the water, and dozens of Tic Tacs were dropping down from 80,000 feet to dock with it that you got to see clear as day on footage. Correct. That footage is probably never going to get out, but you saw it. I don't think they'll ever re release it, and I think footage that they do release and will release, they're going to make it fuzzy. They're not going to make it clear for you guys, and they're going to cut it up. Why? They don't want people to know that that technology is out there, especially when what I've seen, where you know you see that object skip that time and just shoot straight up into space. There's nothing that can do that. So they're showing us a, a whitewashed version. What you saw was so impressive. If people saw that, they might freak out. Oh, yeah, I think so. It's a pretty clear video. Are you excited that some of these releases are coming out? Is this a good thing in your opinion? I think it's an awesome thing. I think that the government needs to be a lot more honest with people and tell them what's out there. I love it because it doesn't scare me. It doesn't freak me out. And I'm excited to see if more information is going to come out, more videos.
Well, if you had that video and you had the authority, what would you tell the public? Well, I'd work them up for the video. You know what I mean? I'd work them up for the video with, you know, past history of what's been going on and just work them up for the video and tell them that this is the, the newest footage, the newest information we have. And, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, these people or these objects or whatever are not a threat. They're just here to to do their thing and do what they need and leave. Everybody's starting to, to call them anomalous aerial threats. Originally, the intelligence community was using AAV, anomalous aerial vehicle, but the moment this story hit the news, they turned the last V in AAV to AAT, anomalous aerial threat. If they were a threat, then, then why didn't they shoot down F-18s? Why didn't, why didn't they blow up the Nimitz and the whole fleet? They already have a plan in the works if they, cha- if they changed it. They have to do it. They have to change the verbiage. UFOs especially. Why, why would they change it to a threat? <laughs> you know they know what they're doing, man. Isn't it kind of obvious? I don't believe UFOs are a threat. And it tells me that there's a greater technology beyond this Earth that could destroy us, that hasn't destroyed us in hundreds of thousands of years. I think people are a lot more comfortable with it people do believe in it and this footage and all the other footage that there is of this event it's opened up people's eyes and and it's really made things clarified as far as ufos being real or being fake i think it's a great thing it makes people wonder it makes people think of their existence it, it's pretty it's pretty cool i think it's a good thing and i think the government's scared and they know that people are comfortable with it. You know what I mean? They, people are. People are very comfortable with UFOs. And people are absorbing it. You think they're having to respond with how comfortable people are becoming? Correct, yes. You have to remember the Internet is, is the government's fear. That's how everybody is getting all this information out and able to communicate and talk. Whereas when we didn't have the Internet, it was all newspapers, propaganda, Whereas the internet, you have access to anybody you want. So the internet has democratized truth in a way, and that is a oh, yeah. great fear of our government. Oh my God, yes. You know, people see this stuff, they'll question life, you know. They'll question everything that they know. I mean, that's my opinion. I think people are ready for it. And they'll be like, oh yeah, we need that, okay. No big deal. What else we got? That day changed my whole perspective on life. It blew my mind. I knew there was more in this world and universe than anything imaginable. So that's, you know, it opened up my mind and it gave me some relief. Weaponize your curiosity and go to extraordinarybeliefs.com to learn more.